So it's winter finally here in Colorado. And one of the things I've been doing is to try to adapt my summer backpacking gear to work in the winter. One of the big challenges I'm having is adapting my water carrying system to work in below freezing conditions. Water, if you carry it in like a smart water bottle like this one, which is what I use in the summertime, will freeze pretty quickly if left out in the open when the temperatures dip below freezing. So what do you do? Well, what I've done in the past is use a insulated bottle carrier. This super koozie holds a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle inside. And the whole thing is insulated around using some sort of closed cell foam. And then you just zip the top to seal it from all the cold. And this works pretty well in my, my past backpacking trips out in the cold. It is a little bulky, as you can see. It's not something that uh, you can put into a little crevice or into a front pocket, or even some side pockets have a difficulty carrying this. It weighs about 300 grams, and that includes the Nalgene bottle. And I was really set with using something like this. It seemed to work good enough until my climbing gym was getting rid of all the extra bottles that they had in their lost and found collection. My climbing gym likes to sell them for really cheap and then donate the money that they round up from it to a local nonprofit. And the last time they did that, I picked up this, which is a Hydro Flask in the same 32 ounce capacity as my Nalgene. A Hydro Flask uses a completely different system. It's a double-walled stainless steel bottle with a vacuum kind of air gap in between, which is what creates most of the insulation of this bottle. The interior of the bottle is also reflective, so there is a little bit of radiant insulation as well, which the Nalgene kind of koozie wax. And it's a lot slimmer. You can actually put this in a side pocket of a backpack a lot easier. It just takes up a whole lot less volume than the Nalgene system. So now, yeah, I'm at an impasse. I've lost the freedom of simplicity and gained the freedom of choice. And so I have to ask myself, which system works better? Which bottle will keep my water from freezing longer? And honestly, I, do, I really don't know in 100% confidence which one works better. My guess, though, is the Hydro Flask works a ton better. Just because why would you use this technology? which is more expensive, more difficult to produce, weighs more over this technology, which is far more simple, weighs less, it's just bulkier. I do know there's a lot of marketing for the Hydro Flask brand. I don't think that's all there is to it because this technology is actually older than this technology and has proven to be effective. But you know what? I want numbers. So I decided to put my sixth grade science fair cap on and run a quick experiment. I got a plain old Nalgene bottle. I had my Hydro Flask and I had my Nalgene bottle in a koozie and I filled them up all with the almost boiling water at the exact same temperature I'm using this, which is a probe thermometer. You may be familiar with something like this if you're really into barbecuing meat and you have to know what the internal temperature of the meat is to make sure it's done. And along with the thermometer I already had, I did pick up a couple other thermometers that I thought would be interesting to play around with. So this is a very tiny thermometer from a company called Govi. And this thermometer is designed to live in like a, a small nook and cranny of a, a room that you have so you can monitor the temperature of that room remotely. This can just connect to, say, my phone via Bluetooth and then show me what the temperature is while I'm off site, which is really cool. So I decided to use one of these and put them in the room that I'm doing my overnight test of my bottles. And then I picked up a different thermometer from Gobi, this one. And this one is kind of made for putting in like a deep freezer chest. What you'll see is you'll have a kind of a display. This is the actual thermometer, but at the end it has a probe. So you can keep the thermometer outside of say the freezer and then just stick the probe in the freezer get the temperature for inside the freezer. And then this little buddy will transmit the temperature via Bluetooth to your phone. And I thought it'd be really cool if we use the probe and put that into the water of the Nika Nalgene bottle. I'm sort of using it as the control and watch as the temperature of the water decreases over time. So yeah, using the three thermometers, I set up the experiment. I boiled the water. I put them into the three different containers we're using. I made sure the temperature was the same. I grabbed them all and put them in the garage so they could sit there during the night where the garage will get super cold. And after five and a half hours, what were the results? Oh, so glad you asked. I have them right here. So the first thing I wanted to look at is the ambient temperature of the room. So the temperature of the room itself, the garage, 
It was between 35 and 38 degrees Fahrenheit. I was hoping that the room was going to be below freezing, but this will work fine for us. This is obviously a very crude, very simple experiment. And then I have a log of the temperature that the probe is picking up of the water inside my naked Nalgene bottle. Now the temperature started off around 155 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was really interesting to me because I actually initially took the temperature of the water at about 174 degrees Fahrenheit, which means within the couple minutes that I transported the bottle from the kitchen to the garage, the water decreased in temperature already by 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can kind of surmise that without insulation, water loses its energy, its heat very quickly. Now the loss of temperature does decrease over time. By hour number four, it took over 40 minutes for it to drop one more degree. And I know this is very simple, but it kind of makes sense if you've ever observed how water works. You get a steaming bowl of soup and you know it's like too hot to actually like sip. And then you just kind of wait a couple minutes and blow on it, you know, and then, you know, it's fine. And when water does eventually freeze, it doesn't freeze all at once. Usually it just freezes on the sides or on the top of your bottle so you can't open it. It's really annoying. And then it might give us some hints on the best ways to make water because we always want to conserve our fuel. So if we're making water from snow, it's probably not worth it to make that water as hot as possible to get it to boiling to then put it into a water bottle that we have because that high temperature is going to lower itself quite fast, even in an insulated bottle. Kind of a cool thing to be reminded of. Get your water hot. doesn't have to be boiling. Just get into the insulated water bottle as fast as you can. So the main course, how did our Nalgene bottle covered in an insulated water bottle holder fare against the Hydro Flask? After about five and a half hours, the initial temperature of 174 degrees Fahrenheit was lowered to 94 degrees Fahrenheit in the Nalgene bottle. And that's pretty good, right? That's definitely still very usable water to even make tea with while backpacking. Now you have to remember when you're backpacking, you're going to open up that water bottle to actually take swigs of drinks. And every time you do that, you're going to introduce cold into your water bottle interior because you removed the insulation of the water bottle. So you're not gonna see this kind of performance out in the field, but it gives us a good estimate of what to expect. Now, the Hydro Flask ended with water after five and a half hours that I measured at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Unequivocally, without question, I will have to crown the Hydro Flask system for keeping the water hotter after five and a half hours. Like, it's not even close. The Hydro Flask kept the water 40 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the Nalgene bottle. But the question still remains, which system should you use? Well, I drink a lot of water, so I'm probably just going to use both systems. But I'm going to know that the Hydro Flask keeps my water warmer for longer. So I'll drink this water last. And because this weighs so much, I'm only going to bring one of these. But I'll bring a second water bottle using the Nalgene system with the insulated cover. And then just make sure I drink this water first. And then I think it's a kind of a really good compromise to the system. I have one bottle that's heavier, but it's a lot more convenient size-wise and volume-wise, and it keeps the water a lot warmer longer. And then I have this guy, which is a lot lighter, even though it's bulkier and water doesn't stay as warm for as long. So, you know, I was producing this video, I was making up the write-up that goes with this video, and I was doing an experiment, and I realized there was one more ultimate option to this problem of keeping water from freezing. And that is the Nalgene koozie, the Nalgene water model holder, and the Hydro Flask. The Hydro Flask can fit into the Nalgene water model holder. So if you really need water to stay as warm as possible for longer as possible, just combine the systems. And actually, the system actually works really well for my overall system of bringing a Nalgene bottle with the insulated cover and the Hydro Flask. Because if I drink the Nalgene water first, I can then take the Nalgene water out and put the Hydro Flask back in. I was really proud of myself about coming to that conclusion. So that's it. That's the video. It's really fun to do these like grade school level science experiments. And I'm going to do a couple more and test other systems of winter backpacking. I actually picked up a bunch of those uh, thermometers from Gobi. It's not a plug or anything. I just thought they're cool and they're really cheap. So I'll, I'll leave a, a link in the description for you to grab these if you want. But I'm really looking forward to future experiments that I'm going to be doing with 
thermometers, logging temperatures, and graphing them out. So if that's for whatever reason interesting to you too, please subscribe and all that kind of stuff. I also did a detailed write-up on my Long Ranger blog on the content of this video, and you can find the link to that blog post in the description of this video. And until I see you again, long may you range. It's so funny, like this isn't my water bottle, so the stickers that are on it are also not my style of stickers. So what do we have here? We have a tree, some sort of abstract representation of a pine tree. Cool, cool, I like that, I like this. We have an illustration, it looks like, of a uh, trash canister from a Denver alleyway. It's very nice, very Evan Hecox-like name drop in Evan Hecox. And then we have the hippie drug referencing one, Midnight Visuals, with like, I don't know, like a flowery kind of yin yang thing, very very similar to the, the bagel company that's in town. Moe's Bagel uses that kind of same flower looking thing. So I'm not sure what that's about, but it's, it's cool. Cool. Uh, I voted sticker. Thank you for voting. So yeah, I just grabbed this for a couple of bucks because the person who originally owned it didn't didn't go back to to grab it again. But if this is yours, if this is your Hydro Flask, I would love to give it back to you. Don't worry about the money. You know, I know these stickers mean a lot of sentimental value. I just want to make sure it gets reconnected with its owner.